How's it going everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the stock market, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of February, and probably for the next couple of weeks here in 2020. And like you all read in the title, I want to go over Facebook stock because we saw quite the turn of events today in terms of the technicals of Facebook, and I want to go over my thoughts on that and what I personally did in terms of my swing position. So before we do get into the video, all I ask for you from you is drop that like for me, or, or, or not drop that like, smash that like button, and consider subscribing if you guys want to see further content like this. And if you haven't gotten your two free stocks from Weeble quite yet, their promotion runs out on the 13th. They're valued up to 1400 bucks, by the way. That's linked down below in the description box. All you have to do is deposit 100 bucks and you get those two free stocks. So let's get into the video now, starting off here with the SPX. And I am recording, um, just a disclaimer here, I am recording this video with about an hour and 15 minutes left in the market today. So a lot of things can change in these last hour and 15 minutes. But as of right now, the market is green. It's up $11.42 in terms of the S&P here, up 0.35%. And although we are pulling down a bit here, as you guys can see, the bulls are still in charge because we had a massive gap up this morning. We actually hit an all-time high on the S&P 500 at $3,375.63. So as of now, it seems like the S&P is kind of gapping down and filling that gap maybe to where um, we were pre-market today. And let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Or actually yesterday after market hours. You guys can see it right here. This is kind of where we, we gapped up from. So... As of, as of now, it seems like we're trying to fill back down there, meaning this could end up being a support, roughly at around 3350 maybe 3355 this general area putting us on top of that 180 SMA as well here on the 5-day, five 5-minute. Five Watch that to be a support on the S&P. And the bulls, again, are still 100% in charge here from these technicals that I'm seeing at least, right? So that's kind of the rundown on the S&P. Nothing too crazy here. The Dow Jones on the flip side is struggling a bit. It's still green, up 27 points right now, up 0.09%. And it actually hit an all-time high, um, which is a pretty good sign too at $29,415.39. And take a look at that. So despite the fact that we're selling off here, we still hit an all-time high. We still had a nice gap up. And it seems like we actually already filled that gap down, the one that we opened from yesterday's close, Already, So we did that on the Dow, and again, the S&P is in the process of potentially doing that. So this right here where we are, guys, especially if we pop above this 50 SMA here, and of course, you'll see that if, if um, you're watching this tonight, which obviously you are watching this after the market closed. So take a look. Did we end up popping out if we did? That would be very positive for the bulls here for the Dow because that would solidify, again, 29270-ish uh, as that support double bottom breakout, and we could be seeing further upside from there. So going over here to the NASDAQ, up 18 points, up 0.2%. This hit an all-time high. It was yesterday, right? Is today the... No, that was actually today, this morning. Yes, this morning, about an hour and 10 minutes into the session, that's where we hit an all-time high at 960950 and since then the Nasdaq just like the S&P and the Dow it's been feeling that pressure selling off a nice I'd say 50 to about 60 points from hitting that all-time high which is a pretty big swing but at the end of the day it's actually not you know because the Nasdaq now is pushing 10,000 so 60 50 60 bucks 
it's not as much as it used to be, let's say, three years ago when that NASDAQ, or not even three years ago, during this sell-off here back in 2018, October to December in 2018, this back here when the NASDAQ was 6,000, 50, 60 points was a lot more back then than it is right now. And that's kind of obvious as the markets continue to grow over time, right? So the NASDAQ at this point, if we just take a look at the hourly chart, it's obviously still uptrending. The bulls are still in charge and we're seeing maybe a retracement now to let's say 94.80, maybe $9,500 flat, which would put us on top of of that 50 simple moving average here on the hourly chart. So now that we got some technicals broken down, the uh, you know the major markets, let's do a coronavirus update because yesterday I didn't give you guys numbers, but today I'm going to give you guys some numbers. So the total number of deaths on the mainland of China was 1,016 as of the recording of this video. The National Health Commission said on Tuesday, while 42,638 infections have been reported, the vast majority of deaths and infections are in the Wuhan and the surrounding Hubei province. So everything that those numbers are from that, um, you know, everything in the mainland of China, pretty much. Right. And the World Health Organization has said a vaccine for the coronavirus could be ready in 18 months. So in 18 months, that's where they're they're kind of projecting this vaccine to come out, guys, which I guess is a good sign here. Um, I'm not a medical professional by any means. I have no idea how that works. I don't know if that's a, a, a far a, a far you know kind of time away for the vaccine. Could they make it quicker? I don't know. Again, I'm not a medical professional whatsoever, so I'll leave that up to them. Still, at least 25 countries are affected right now, but again, the vast majority is still in the mainland of China, Wuhan, and the Hubei province. So that's kind of a rundown there, and again, like I've been mentioning, guys, and obviously, like you guys, you can clearly see for yourselves, the markets, they don't really care about um, the, 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 the coronavirus, not that they don't care about it, but it seems like the markets are just roaring along, even though the virus is killing more people every day and spreading more, right? So, and, uh, just infecting more people, right? So markets continue roaring along, but Hey, what do you know? This happens guys, you know, everything that happens, you, you can't explain definitively why it happened. Sometimes things are just unknown. A lot of the times they are. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? Now, let's just go over what I did today in terms of my trading session. And I actually, let's start off with Facebook here. I actually took a small profit on Facebook. I pretty much sold out of my entire Facebook position due to really this this negative catalyst coming out today, but not just because of that, but due to this technical pattern not looking too favorable, at least to my style of trading, right? I, I was excited about Facebook yesterday. You guys saw in the video that I was hoping it would break 213 and, and start trucking into 215, right? That was where I was looking at it because this was an old support from from a couple days ago so the fact that obviously we didn't break that and we got that negative catalyst and I don't know if you guys know but I'll tell you right now we got a couple downgrades well one big one in particular and some price cuts from Pivotal Research they downgraded Facebook to a sell and like I say on this channel all the time we don't take analysts expectations and their predictions and their targets um, you know, 100% fact, right? This, we always take it with a grain of salt, but some people out there, they freak out regardless, right? They don't take it with a grain of salt and they sell out kind of like me. I'm one of those, right? Because I sold out now due to this coming, right? Due to this piece of news coming and freaking other people out. I just sold out to play it safe, right? And that's what a lot of people do when something like this happens, 
which is why, again, you're seeing this big drop, and it's continuing to drop here as I'm filming the video. It's down 2.5%, down $5.20. And for me, I didn't take a loss because... I was building this position around 207. I bought a little bit more. Actually, no, it wasn't. Um, it was actually before this. It was at around 207, bought a little bit more down here. So I actually had some buffer built in up when we were at around 212, 213 per share. So when I saw this big drop, I was up about a dollar, two dollars per share. So I figured, let me just lock in this little profit. Let's see if this news goes away in the short term, and then I'll re enter. And for me, that's kind of the safest way to approach this. This, this particular stock right now and my trade in general. And um, I'd love to know what you guys have to think about that. Am I going to regret that? Will this swing back up? Honestly, I think it will swing back up. But I'll re-enter in a couple days to see whether or not, again, the situation fizzles out, this catalyst fizzles out, and uh, I probably, I, I think it probably will, but we'll see here. I'm just playing it safe, guys, at the end of the day. So another thing I ended up doing today was buying a little bit more Uber. I bought a little bit more Uber at about $40, I think, in 80 cents this morning. We, we saw a nice pop. Very nice pop from uh, from forty dollars and thirty six cents today. We sold off, consolidated around there on top of that one eighty SMA on this daily chart, and we saw a big move. So I decided to buy a couple more shares of Uber. It was actually a nice little um, addition to my position yesterday, which if you guys saw, I bought in around $40 and like 39 cents, $40 and 40 cents roughly there. So right now I'm in Uber, I'd say roughly $40 and uh, 60 to 70 ish cents right around there. And I'm happy with it, guys. I'm planning on adding more shares right now up about 1.5% uh, uh, roughly. And this is one that I believe has potential to get up to 45 to about 46 bucks. And we'll talk about Lyft here in a couple minutes. They're reporting earnings today, actually. And if they do well, if they expect profitability sooner, like Uber did, that could lift Lyft stock. That's kind of a funny thing, no pun intended there. That could lift Lyft stock and thus lift Uber stock even more. So that's kind of what I'm watching out here. Not that I'm not that I'm banking on Lyft doing well. That's 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 a separate trade, but I think they're correlated in a sense. But overall, Lyft, even without Lyft, I think Uber is going to do well because the stock itself reported solid earnings and earlier profitability. So even if Lyft does bad, I still think Uber is going to do well here in the short term. So that's Uber, Facebook. What else did I do today, guys? That's that's pretty much it, right? I'm still holding Target. Target I bought yesterday, TGT. Saw a bit of a dip today, but I like the way that it held the uptrend, guys. Take a look at this. I like the way it held the overall uptrend here despite the sell-off. I did not add more shares down here, but I'm simply just holding on to the shares that I did buy yesterday on this dip right here. So for me, guys, I sold out of Facebook, bought a little bit more Uber. I'm still in Target, and that's pretty much it. I'd love to know what you guys did in the comment section down below. As always, now let's run through this lengthy list of stocks that I want to talk about. Two in particular here that we don't talk about ever on the channel, but they just had some crazy moves today out there that I just want to cover here just for fun, right? So Tesla... This didn't have a crazy move, but Tesla in general here is straight up still consolidating at around 760, 770. It's been coasting at this level over the past couple of days. Really for the past two to three trading sessions, it's been hovering around the mid 700s. And for me, that's a pretty good sign. I'm not even going to lie to you. I think that's a good sign because on this 20 day chart, we're showing a nice hold above both of these moving averages, and we're not showing any legit dump-off signal, right? We're still holding the trend. If we were to show a aggressive sell-off back into the, the low 700s, high 600s, mid 600s, I'd be worried for a further pullback at that point. But for me still, I still have, um, um, honestly, hope 
from a, a technical basis here that that Tesla can still run up back to the 800s, 850s right here, right? And, you know, that's what the technicals are showing. At the end of the day, the technicals don't lie. The hype is still there. The positivity is still there. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not tuning Tesla out just because it's ran up so much, guys. A lot of the time, stocks run up like this. They sell off. They settle down a little bit. Then they sneak up on you again. Then, then they blow up again. That could happen here. And I, not saying it's going to happen, but I can see it happening for sure. So Tesla. I'm just keeping my eye on it more as a day trade. Another one here that I'm liking on a pull down is Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT. And this is a, a start of a larger pullback, I'm hoping, because we're showing an aggressive sell-off here below that 50 SMA. This could be because the markets, as I'm recording here, they're actually falling even further from when, the, when I started the video. So the markets in general are selling off. Now we're getting a, a bigger drop in a large cap stock, right? That makes sense. So if we could get Microsoft in the low 180s, I'm striking. Or even in the mid 170s, that's a dream come true as well. Maybe not a dream come true. I said yesterday the dream come true would be in the 160s, so I'm sticking to 160s as the dream come true. 175, that would still be good, guys, but not as good, obviously, as 165. So Microsoft, for sure, looking for an entry point. Um, maybe even when I end off this video, because I still have about an hour left or there is an hour left in the market, so I might have time to make a move depending on what the markets look like, but most likely I'll wait till tomorrow, see what ends up happening here, and uh, make a move from there. So the two stocks here that are going bananas, one up, one down, let's start with the good one here, is Sprint, ticker symbol S. So Sprint Yes, you guys see that? It's up 75% right now, up $3.60 because the T-Mobile merger, well, the judge ruled in favor of that. And that's obviously amazing news here for Sprint. I'm not too big of an investor. I mean, I own AT&T, but I don't know an, an, a big amount here about Sprint in particular. But one thing I do know is They've been struggling, and that's kind of evident here based off, or rather obvious here, based off of the, the, the stock's chart, right? If you see a stock trending down, especially in a three-year, five-year time frame, that means management is not executing. They're not pushing the business in the right direction. They're obviously displeasing shareholders. That's why the stock's going down, right? So a stock that's doing well, that's executing, that's that's growing, it's not going to be going down. Or a company that's growing, their stock's not going down, guys. So obviously Sprint's have been having some problems. So this, this merger, it might be good for them. Who knows? I have to do some more research, but 75% in the green, that is very, very impressive. Now on the flip side, Under Armour, guys, this thing got squashed today. It's down 18% right now, down $3.75. And Under Armour reported some earnings that would spook a lot of investors. Let me tell you guys what they reported. I think it was this morning. Well, their EPS was supposed to be $10 per share, or that's what analysts were expecting, but they came in negative. They came in at a loss of $0.03 cents per share. So profits were expected, but losses came in. That's never good because you have to realize, like I mentioned, people invest in companies. There's investors out there that won't touch companies that are unprofitable. Once they go unprofitable, they really sell out. I don't know if uh, Under Armour, I haven't done enough research into them to know if they're consistently profitable. Looking down here, it seems like they're the opposite. They're not consistently profitable. We see here, we see a cent loss, three cent loss. Then they had a profit of 25 cents, profit of nine cents, loss of five cents, loss of four cents, 23 cent profit. So they're very inconsistent in terms of their earnings here, which is what I'm seeing. So 
yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe investors are freaking out because of the profit thing. Their revenue came in. They missed on that, but not as bad as profit. Revenue came in at $1.4 billion versus $1.47 billion. So maybe a bounce back play here in Under Armour. Probably not for me, for my style of trading, but it's still worth watching out there. Ticker symbol UAA. So NVIDIA here is one that is roaring, guys. And it was up today 1.5%, up $3.85. Yesterday is where the big move came, where we filled that gap all the way to about 260 bucks. Now we filled the gap, I think, earlier all the way up to 270 and now if we look back at the three-year chart we're we're really at the, at those all-time highs guys here on Nvidia reaching about $292 share uh, per share or rather approaching that level right and Nvidia is actually reporting earnings here which obviously if they smash these earnings out the park I think it's likely that they could be testing those all-time highs here in 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 maybe the next couple of weeks and their earnings they're supposed to bring in average here from Yahoo Finance EPS of a dollar 66 and revenue of 2.96 billion so people buying up here their um, Nvidia must must be must be telling you something right this is telling me something at least because people are starting to buy up the stock to where it pushes it up twenty dollars in a single day or rather a two-day spam that's pretty pretty big here so for me I'm for sure watching their guidance their EPS revenue what they bring to the table how they do versus analysts the sentiment around the stock after earnings this is going to be huge for me when deciding on whether or not to take a position after nvidia's earnings report so another one that's reporting is roku and we're seeing a uh, uh actually yes they're reporting tomorrow and we're seeing an overall break in the downtrend, I'd say, if we pull up this, let me show you this four-hour chart, we're actually breaking out of that 180 SMA, the 50 SMA downtrend, but now we're starting to see a huge sell candle, which I didn't see up until this point, which might change my opinion here, but honestly, no, because it's still trending above the moving averages. So we saw the massive pop today. They're reporting earnings on, let's see, um, what, what day is this? On the 13th, so that's tomorrow or in two days from now. And their earnings are supposed to be negative 14 cents per share EPS with revenue of $391 million. So watch for those earnings earnings me i don't buy before i buy after i'm looking to see sentiment i'm looking to see growth year over year guidance all of that good stuff right so for roku it's looking good but this big sell-off why is this why is this selling off here i'm guessing it's a bit of profit taking if we go on this five day five minute it makes sense as we are above that 180 sma so watch this dip it can make even for a good day trade tomorrow if we can maybe hold 135 maybe back up to 140 here on ticker symbol roku so lift we talked about uber earlier in this video lift they're reporting here in about 50 minutes so this will be going crazy after hours for sure if you're watching this you'll know what they reported go check it out what are they doing i'm definitely looking forward to it but lift their eps is estimated to be a dollar 39 in the profit nope just kidding in the red they're supposed to lose one dollar and 39 cents eps with revenue of 984.17 million. So note those numbers, take a look at how they actually report um, what they report compared to those numbers and just see what the stocks do because again if this moves up high likelihood uber pushes up as well even though i'm long uber even even if lyft does not do well but it's worth watching at the end of the day in my opinion so crm we got this one in a comment yesterday this is a massive company guys salesforce i think their market cap's like 170 billion um I don't know a lot about this company haven't dove in and done a lot of research but just looking at the trend and hearing about Salesforce around the business community in general they've been doing well 
their stock's gone from 137, broken above moving averages. The uptrend has been pretty sweet here ever since October from 147. Now it's pushing up to the 200s. This is all good in my opinion. Now, for me, I'd need to see their earnings, which are coming out here on the 25th. It's not like we're at a dip buy where I can make a move before earnings. I think we're still at a point where there's more risk than there is reward. So for me, I'm looking to see what happens after their earnings. And I have their earnings listed here, $4.5 billion estimated in revenue with an average estimate EPS being $0.55. Cents. So $0.55 cents EPS with revenue of $4.5 billion here on CRM. Maybe we can get some shares at 185 on this 50 SMA and play a little dip buy um, before earnings, which could be setting up if these markets in general pull down. Being that CRM is a large cap, it'll probably see some sort of retracement. So, hey, that could be a play, um, but... I think there's other moves out there, stocks like Microsoft that might offer a little bit better potential if it were to pull down to 175 and some of the other ones that we have been talking about in this video like Uber as well. So let's finish off this video with Slash CL and Natural Gas. Both of them still continuing this downtrend, guys. So Slash CL this thing has been clobbered ever since we've broken below 52. It's pretty much been in free fall. Honestly, ever since we've broken $60, this thing has been in free fall. So drip is definitely one that could offer some potential here, maybe from 100 bucks to about 122, especially if CL slash CL that is makes the next leg down. Let's say we break below 49.50. That's a key uh, level here, guys, because from there we can easily be gapping down to about $48, $48.50, opening up that huge potential on drip. And another one being, let's say, DWT, which is a level. Leveraged ETN. So natural gas, I'm personally looking at slash NGH20 here, and we're seeing a bounce back play here forming, right? The overall trend, just like CL, is down, but right now, we're seeing some momentum to the upside. Maybe a move up to, let's say, $1.83 for natural gas here, which could give you guys a short-term play. And I actually uploaded a video earlier today breaking down the natural gas report, going down over those uh, particular numbers from the report, and breaking down my opinions on UGAS and DGAS. So I'm going to link that video down below in the description box. Go check it out after this one if you guys are interested but for the sake of time i can't go too deep into this because again i already made a video earlier so go check that out but the gist of it is maybe we could get a bounce back on you guys but overall i think um just go watch the video guys i don't want to spoil it for you so that's pretty much it for today's video so let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on these different stocks, the stock market? What are you trading? If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like down below and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to claim your two free stocks with a deposit of $100 valued up to $1,400 from Webull. That is linked down below in the description box. So thank you all for your support. As always, the markets are pushing red right now so if you're watching this the markets probably did close red um but hopefully this this uh little commentary doesn't age well we'll see but i'll catch you all in the next video peace out